guys, it's Nigel here again from Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you watch this video and like it, please hit the like. Um, as some of you will know, or most of you watching will know, I've got a few builds going on at the moment. I've got two build alongs going on. I've got the Hellcat and the uh, Kitty Hawk Bronco. And there's a couple of other builds in the background which I really should get back into and get done. Um, that wear match schlepper thing for you armor guys needs to be done, doesn't it? So I asked a question, do you want to see a Mr. Servicer video? Uh, basically somebody sent me a video and said, you keep talking about Mr. Servicer, you use it all the time. Um, <clears throat> I've even had one guy tell me that he plays a drinking game and whenever my video comes on, he takes a drink every time I make, m mention Mr. Servicer and he gets drunk on every video. So um, yeah, I love the stuff. Um, I use it all the time. But asked to do a video on what its benefits are, what its downsides are, how to use it, and what the different grades are. So here we go. These are the three I've got. I've got a lot of Mr. Hobby products. And I'm not going to include all of them because some of them aren't even available anymore, such as the um, Mr. Resin Primer. But Mr. Surfacer, I've got the 500, the 1000, and the 1200. You can also get a aerosol version um, of these, but um, I wouldn't thoroughly recommend an aerosol version because you know if you're going to decant it in your airbrush you may as well get this and thin it you use mr color leveling thinners which is this one and put together these make a fantastic family now first of all grades 500 1000 1200 the higher the number the finer it is the thinner it is it's almost like your like your wet and dry grades so the 500 is fairly thick the 1000 is middle of the road, I think there's a 1500 as well, and then you've got the 1200 which is um, the thinnest of them all. Now this is a brand new bottle, I'm not going to open it because I've got one here which is, as you can see, well used and quite tatty. Um, I tend not to use those two as much as I do this one. Reason being, um, if you watch my Temp uh, Tempest Typhoon build I've just put up today, you'll see on there that I've used it on there for... Um, basic seam filling and stuff and sanding and the other different ways of using it now the 500 if i get this out we've got this plastic lid on the bottle which sometimes comes out with a cap and most of the time doesn't now you can see here the 500 is very very thick now this is fantastic as a brush applied kind of liquid filler so if you've got a, a seam on an aircraft which is you know quite nasty quite gnarly you could use this stuff to um to do it but you can see that one of the biggest downsides with it that you can use to your advantage is quite warm here today it's about 20 degrees at the moment um you can see it's just setting even with the bottle open you, you'll see it start to form a skin and what happens is as it gets older it thickens up in the jar which is why if we start when we start talking about spraying this stuff which I'm gonna do I can't tell you to thin it 50 50 or 40 60 or 70 30 because as it gets older it gets thicker now this starts off thinner than this okay but because it's an older bottle and it's been open a few times airs got to it and it's thickened it up now if you want to thin it down okay all you've got to do is come along just to cut a level of thinners. Sorry about that. Put a couple of drops in there. A couple of drops in there. And then give it a stir. And you will see that straight away it will start to thin down. And you will get back to what you had when you originally bought it. And this is about, I'm getting there, that is about the consistency of a new jar of 500, I think, from memory. Um, and also if you have got you know if you've only got a thousand and you want the consistency of 500 then you can put some out on the side leave some in the lid whatever leave it for 10 minutes and it will be this thick and in a minute you'll see the difference between the 500 and the 1000 it's so much thinner so I'm just gonna go around and there we go you can see that just scrape all this off of here get it back into the jar waste not want not people say it's expensive um, it's about five pound fifty a pop I bought this one 
recently £5.50 um, I think when you compare it to a jar of paint and the uses it's got it's not actually that expensive at all and if you're thinning it as a to spray through your airbrush you're going to be thinning it way down so it'll go you know a long long way right so you can see it's attacking the paint on that brush there as well so um there we go now it is good stuff okay now that's a lot thinner now you can see that's a lot thinner so this is about what mr F mr um surfacer 500 is normally like when it's new now as you probably know i'm building a couple of hellcats so i'm building one with the wings down and one with the wings folded so i've got a couple of spare wings now here's here's the spare wings which i'm going to be using now this is also going to form part of the video when i get to the spraying because one of the biggest downsides with this kit is it's got this awful textured plastic which is fine if you're doing like a matte camouflage or something but if you want to do a natural metal finish I mean all Airfix kits are like this now if you want to do a natural metal finish or you wanted to do like the gloss blue like I do then we need to get rid of this rough finish but not lose all the detail we've got a lot of rivet detail and panel line detail so what I'm going to do I'm going to use these scrap wings to show you the difference in the 500,000 and um, 1200 so what I'm, going to do, I'm going to brush paint some of this 500 on here and you can see how thick and gloopy it is okay and it's basically designed as, as I say as a, as a it's called Mr Surfacer it's designed to give you a surface so I'm going to brush paint this over those rivets and everything there okay and we'll see straight away all right that we're gonna start to get that sort of flat finish it's removed all the texture but there is another good thing about this stuff now let me find a, not an old brush here we go no uh, I should have prepared myself better I'm sorry let's use this one right if you're doing a surface and I guess a gearbox on a car or the engine casing in an aircraft or something or a tank turret and you want to give it a cast texture you can see that already that's got like a tax a, a, a texture but if you go over it you can stipple it okay and it's going to start to lift and stuff that's okay okay if it does start to do that just get some thinners now what I've got here is a jar of Mr. Surfacer dirty thinners and I'll cover that again in a second so I'm just going to put some thinners on the brush and then what you can do is go over it and stipple it and move it around okay and you can get as I go down here you can see the brush is drying out so it gets more and more coarse it starts to lift again and what you get is this varying surface okay you could just keep going like this and just keep going until you get the finish you want and you can see on there get the light you can see on there we've got that cast finish and if you keep going it gets finer and finer and finer and then it kind of settles down okay so you can see that you've got that really rough grainy sort of cast finish and if at the end of the day you don't like it all you've got to do is go over it with some Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners on a cloth, wipe it off, start again. Um, even after it's fully dry, it will come off. Okay. And you can see that it's really pulling up there now. And that's getting a proper, proper rough texture finish. Now, if you're really careful and really clever and do a lot of practice, you could probably get an anti slip finish with this, like on your macabres and stuff. But, um,. There you go that's the sort of thing you can do with it so I've used that as an example to show you what you can do you can do it with any of them you don't have to just have 500 for that one so I'm going to close the 500 up so we've done our work with that one now there we go now I'm going to move on to the 1000 now I'm going to clean this brush off to get all this thick gloop off it I don't normally worry about cleaning brush, Mr. Surfacer brushes because when you use it, it kind of dissolves itself. So you don't need to clean the brushes thoroughly. Okay, and I'll just give this one a clean as well. 
Right, so, Mr. Surfacer 1000. Now you'll see that this, straight away this one is much thinner. And this is a fairly new pot, so this is how you get it when it's new. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a stir. And it just shows you that this is much, much thinner than the 500 was. There we go. Right, so clean my brush off. Get the brush in there. As I say, the brush will sort itself out. Okay, and you can see that's a lot thinner, a lot finer, a lot less thick than the 500. So I'll go here with this one and brush this one on. And straight away you can see that the, the detail underneath is showing through. So if I were to use this, got a bristle come out there. If I were to use this for covering up a damaged area, some sanding marks or whatever, the chances are the sanding marks might show through. So you have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so I can brush some more on now. And as you can see, it starts to thicken up very quickly. Okay, so even though this stuff is really fine, I can come along with my other brush, dampen it with the thinners and start to do a cast texture finish. As you can see there we've got a textured finish coming. Okay. Now if I wait a few more seconds you can see it's drier still so I can give it more of a textured finish. Wait a few more seconds and as you can see you get this and you can get a finer texture finish with that one than you can with that one. All right. And you can see here you get the brush marks and everything so you know really to use as a primer you really need to be spraying it or at least thinning it heavily, very heavily. Okay, but I don't think it was ever meant as a brush on paint, but it is a sort of brush on filler. And you can see in here that the actual detail underneath the panel lines and the rivets are starting to show through, whereas it, as it dries, it shrinks back. One thing I found it's not very good for is like if you're doing P51 wings and you want to get rid of the rivets, um, to get it to go into the rivets so you can sand it out and fill them you need to use a very very thin mixture and then you need to put loads of coats on to, to actually cover the rivets up and what I found I, I did a Tamiya one years ago and um oh I just no it wasn't a Tamiya it was a trumpeter P51B which I gave up on because it was so out of shape um but yeah I started doing the the the, 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 the rivets and it doesn't go into the rivets so as you start to sand away you find the hole reappears because all it's done is formed a skin over the rivet hole so there we go and you can see that's dry now and I can give that another stipple okay and if I want to bring it back to life where it started to dry just put some thinners on it and there we go it's back to how it was okay and if I want to start stippling again I can all right so it's very very forgiving but you must use your Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. You can use Tamiya Thinners with it, but nothing works like this, okay? So let's have a look at the 1200 now. Now, as I say, this is an old, old bottle. Very, I tend not to use 1200, I hardly ever. I think I mainly use it for spraying. And it looks like, I think I've thinned this. Oh no. So you can see this is a lot thinner. This is more like a, a normal, sort of paint which is very thin oh, there's one other thing I forgot to say if you're using Mr. Surfacer 1000 and you want it to be thick like this something I should be able to show you here that's the 1200 if you saw my typhoon video you've seen me doing this on the sides of the bottle here it tends to congeal so if you use it from there, as you can see, it's thicker than if you get it from out of the jar. Okay, so it's always worth brushing some up there 
and it will um, it will start to congeal in the bottle and then you've got something a bit thicker there if you need it. Um, just another little tip I've learned over the years. It's one of those things you, you can't sort of read it in a book or you've got to, you just get it from experience. Um, and then this one here, as I say, now that where I revitalized it, now I can go over and stipple it again if I want to. And then if I don't like it, I can brush some uh, Mr. Leavenly Thinners on there and take it back again and then come back and stipple it. Now, if you look at that there now, how that is, I've got a very, very fine stippled finish which would be great for say a smaller scale tank textured cast surface okay so the 1200 just clean the brush off so as not to misguide anyone 1200 as you can see much much thinner but again we've got this thicker stuff on the side here if we want to use it now the thing I don't know um, and please don't anybody go into lengthy replies with technical jargon. The thing I don't know is when they call it 500, 1000, 1200, is it the same thing thinned? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a finer pigment. It probably is a finer pigment. I tend to use 1200 for spraying, um, and even though I thin it down even more. But I'll brush this on here now, and you can see I'm brushing it on fairly thick. We'll go over that panel line there. And you can see that it's more like a paint and you'll see little bubbles start to appear and that's where it's going down into the rivet holes whereas these tend to just sit on the surface as I said and then when you rub it down in fact I can show you there close up now if you look along that front row of rivets here you will see that the the rivets are starting to reappear where it's just formed a skin and then pulled itself over but you will see in here like You'll see down the left hand side of the 1200 there it's doing the same thing already so you just have to put some more on let it go in and this is what I'm saying as, as an actual filler for the rivet holes I've never had much success okay but you can see there that's gone on it's much much thinner and it's going to take longer to dry but still I can go in if I want to and I can stipple it, give it a cast finish, or whatever, just like that. Okay, and one other thing I can show you, if you put it on and you don't like it, say I put this on here and I think, oh no, I meant to put it over there, not there. You can get a cotton bud, wet it with thinners, like that go over the cloth and it's gone you can see it's absolutely gone so that's another good thing with it um, you know you, you people comment about how I much, how much I love this stuff and why I go on about it hopefully now you can see why it is just awesome stuff um, and there you go also if you're using HGW rivet lines it makes a fantastic surface to um, to bond them to. They bond really well to this. And you can see again, we've got an even finer texture on that one. Okay, so you've got a lovely cast texture on there now. You can see I've pushed it down into all those rivet holes and it's just gonna shrink back and shrink back. Now I'm doing this now, it's, it's Saturday evening. And the reason I'm doing this now is so that I can finish this video tomorrow with all this gone dry. So what I intend to do is in a minute is spray some on here and see where we go. I mentioned about this dirty thinners. This is something worth having. When you've used up a bottle of Mr. Surfacer, keep an old jar, keep the plastic sealer lid because it stops it evaporating. Um, clean your airbrush out with Mr. Color Leveling Thinners, okay, when you used it for spraying, or clean your brushes in it, and then when you've cleaned your airbrush out pour the thinners in here okay and what you will have then is basically a jar of Mr. Color leveling thinners which has been dirtied with all your Mr. Surfacers so when it comes time and you need to thin Mr. Surfacer you can use this 
so you're getting you're cleaning your airbrush for free basically rather than wasting your uh, wasting your solvents so that's just a little tip the other thing you can do is just pour it like with that 500 you could pour it straight back in there uh, because that was so thick it needed thinning anyway so um there you go now I'm gonna go on now and spray this um, what I'll probably do is come and show you when I've mixed it the sort of consistency I go for and we'll go from there okay so I've thinned this now that's 12 mr. mr. surfacer 1200 and I've thinned that with the uh, with the dirty thinners and it's about 50 50 I've got there but don't ever go with 50 50 with this stuff because you have to do it by sight um, and you can see there it's about the consistency of milk so it's pretty thin um, I could actually add a touch more mr. surfacer to that actually just to thicken it up a touch okay but you you will it, it's one of those things you learn with experience you, you can't read it in a book or whatever there's no I mean I'm not a lot of people like to thin their paints by dropping everything I I don't I just mix it till it looks right um, it's not like a two-pack or anything where it needs to be specific ratios it just needs to be thin this is an Iwata uh, Revolution BR it's got a 0.3 needle and I'm at about 18 20 PSI I think so um just check my flow and I can see it's coming through there and just going to spray this on there now normally I'll be doing this in the booth with the extraction on because this stuff stinks and it's not very good for you either so what I'm going to do here all I want to do is just put a coat on here to get this covered so that I can then rub it down and try the glossy blue on there and see if I can actually get a decent finish I don't want a perfect shine but I want something good enough to put decals on um, because I've what I found on the interior of the fuselage and stuff it just doesn't look good at all it's very very grainy so um, I want to try and get a better finish but without losing the um, without losing the detail I don't want to lose this you know this this beautiful um, um, stretch panels and, and rivets and panel lines and all that I don't want to lose any of that so I don't want to go lathering it on but I am going to put a pretty wet coat on here you can see it's very warm it's drying out straight away and I've run out of paint now so we'll see if that's enough that was what three three good coats on there so we'll see if that's enough to um to basically get us that smooth finish we're after okay so it's about what is it now 12 14 hours later and as we can see the mr surfacer is all dry and we can see that on this wing panel with the mr surfacer 1200 thinned we have got a beautifully primed finish very very smooth it's it's smoother than the original plastic and in the Hellcat videos I'll be doing some sanding and working on this to see how we get a shine from it but basically I've done this in this video just to show you that it can be thinned sprayed uses used as a primer and it is wonderful stuff um, and it won't peel you can sand it it won't flake off and everything like that Vallejo rubbish does this um, you can see this is all dried and you can see that as it's dried the texture has settled down a bit so if you're after a sort of really lumpy you know horrible finish you can get that there with the uh, with the 500 and then you can see the the subtle cast finish I achieved there so that would be see, suitable for a for an engine case on a larger scale kit the work I did there is all settled down and the work I did there has practically disappeared you can just about pick it up on the camera on the iPhone should I say on the subject of cameras I'm thinking about getting a Canon M50 so um, that's going to be better for you and you can see here the 1200 has gone into all the rivets and all the panel lines and everything okay whereas the, the 1000 has gone into most of them and the 500 well hardly gone into any of them at all so you can see the thinner you are the, the, the better you are as a, as a primer but for gap filling obviously the thicker the better okay and as I said to you before with these um we're trying to fill rivets as you can see 
it just pulls down into them so you put another coat on the top and it pulls down you put another coat on the top it pulls down or you get like you get here when you sand it out and what I'll do is I'll try and show you this when you sand it out you get the rivets showing through because all it's done is formed a skin over the top and then when you sand it you can also see it's pretty durable for sanding but when you sand it you'll see that a lot of the rivets come back okay now I'm not being careful not to, to ruin the uh, finish on here because it's just a scrap wing but I don't know if I could show you in there but those rivets there are just full of dust now if I were to blow them out they'll probably be mostly exposed so that's the problem with them um, with using this as a, as, a, as a filler for you could use the 1200 and just keep putting lots of coats on um, and as you can see as well the other thing is with it it's a wonderful um, primer if you need to sand and feather and stuff it's fantastic because it, it does sand so beautifully and it feathers so beautifully um, even this 500 I can sand that back a really poor finish I can sand that back and as you can see I can tone it down so if I wanted that sort of distressed rough finish I've, I've still got it there and then you can control it with the sandpaper and again if I did that okay and I decided that oh I've gone too far I wanted that cast finish to remain what I can do is take my thinners come along here with the brush put it in some Mr. Colour Leveling thinners and here we go again I can start putting my cast texture back in so I can put in that horrible rough finish again even after I've sanded it back okay and as I showed you before you can do the same on here you could bring that back if you wanted to and you can do the same on there all right the other thing you can do of course is brush it around and remove it push it into all the rivet holes whatever whatever you want to do and if you don't want it there again come along with cotton bud in your thinners and just wipe it away like if I didn't want this on here even the 500 just with a bit of Mr. Surfacer uh, Mr. Colour Leavening Thinners sorry on a cotton swab I can remove that and you can see there it's gone okay and if it has ruined some of the rivet holes just get a cotton bud but get it wetter go over and it will pull all the Mr. Surfacer out of all those rivet holes for you all right so there we go that's using it on the brush on a surface to get effects and fill rivets and whatever but as I say it's not the best thing in the world for it um, unless you use the 1200 and just put many many coats on it's, it's, um, it's not the best thing in the world for filling rivets um, not quite sure what is to be honest but um, as I say, I found in my experience it was quite tedious, but also, as I say, I don't know what else you would use, so um, maybe someone can come and comment and tell me what they've done and how they've filled rivets, but uh, I certainly know that there, I mean, where I've, you know, worked all around with the brush, that's gone into those rivet holes, you could just keep doing that and it will keep doing it, but the trouble is the thinners will keep pulling it out, so at some point you're going to have to just paint over it and then sand right so moving forward um mr surfacer mr surfacer mr surfacer in seams is um is going to be quite quite a good little subject so what i thought we'd do is we put together one of these fuel tanks for the um airfix 124 scale hellcat which as you'll know i'm building two of and i thought this would be a good example because we've got seams here um like where this um where this rack goes We've also got a interesting seam around the sides, whereas you've got one side is like this and one side's got the flange. You can see there's a flange around the middle of that tank there. So what we'll do is we'll get these parts off the sprue 
and this is going to turn into a little bit of a beginner's assembly guide but it also falls into the sort of how to use Mr. Servicer thing. Now interestingly on this kit we get two fuel tanks and this one isn't called up in the instructions at all so this one's different in that it's got these, this ribbing on the top and it doesn't have the, the slot for the mounting there but it's got that there so it looks like it couldn't be used but it's for a different variant so I'll take the parts off and put them in the spares bin maybe someone can tell me what it's for if they actually know not what they think what they know and uh, be interesting to see what it's for so get these off the sprue and I want this part here as well go so that's all that taken care of so these are all the parts we need and as you can see this part's got a flange on it and this part hasn't so this is going to be a perfect job for Mr. Surfacer because well Mr. Surfacer being used in a certain way but also not only the Mr. Surfacer comes into play how you do your assembly and then subsequently use the Mr. Servicer becomes an issue. Now, why do companies do this? Why do they put the location tabs right next to the sprue points? It now means you've got to get in there and try and clean that up. Why do they do that? Is it because these people who design these things don't actually build models? Because if they did, I don't think they'd do it. So, so annoying. There's another kit manufacturer that does it all the time and I can't think who it is. But um, yeah, now I've got, rather than just get in there and sand this flat, I've got to get in and try and sand where that, uh, where that location tab is. And you can see that every single sprue point is where the location tab is. So come on Airfix, next kit, please don't do this again. They've done every single one. Everything except for that one. In fact, really, it would be the idea just to take those location tabs off completely. Now, normally, I wouldn't worry about cleaning up on the outside, but because this is going on to here, and we're going to be looking at it like this, we need to get the outside completely perfect before we do anything else. So just go around and make sure there's no horrible nasties on there. Just quickly sand this edge down. And there we go. So that's that all done. Now this one, we just need to go around the edge. So yeah, if you're watching this purely for Mr. Surfacer, you might want to fast forward. But I know that people like to see what I'm doing and the reason I'm doing this is because the way you put this together really affects the outcome of using Mr. Surfacer. I've done the same on here all the sprue connection points are right next to the location points. Okay, so I'm going to go around now with the fine sander just to make sure there's a little bit of a nib left on there. Look. And the reason I'm doing this now is because once it's built up, I won't be able to get in there and sort it. Okay, so we should find now they go together perfectly. Yes, they do. Now I've got a sprue nib there. Now see on this part we've got a smooth finish. So if Airfix could get a smooth finish on that, why didn't they do it everywhere else? I've got a bit of a sprue nib there. I'm going to cut that off. 
so as not to ruin the flatness of that surface. And I also noticed I've got something going on back here. Yeah, there, look. There we go. And there we are. Okay, so this actually has to go inside here. And we can see that we've got a massive joint. Look at the fit on there. Ridiculous. Yeah, so we've got a lot of work to do around that air, around that area there. So that would be good for Mr. Surfacer. So what I'm going to do is just come in with my Tamiya Extra Thin. I'll use some quick setting. Just put a drop on there and place this in like so. That rib in the middle needs to be lined up. That's how critical critical point make sure the rib is nice and straight that gives us less work to do later what I wish they'd done is just molded this and given us two legs to glue in I don't know why they had to do this but, uh, yeah shame that i um, just going to remove the sprue nib on there okay so that's that in place now we'll see how this other one fits with it. Right. Now this is where it becomes critical that you work, if you're going to work with Mr. Surfacer in the way I'm going to show you, then it's critical that you do this this way. Don't put the glue on and start squeezing stuff around. What you want to do now is get some clamps and hopefully the clamps will stay on there. And clamp all this together Okay, and make sure it's all in position before it gets a hint of glue because what you don't want to do, why is that not fitting very well? There we go, that needs two clamps on it, it needs one on the front and it needs one on the back like so and then I'll have to come in there with a peg on there and what I'm doing is I'm going around and checking there are no gaps because we do not want any gaps at all right so I'm going to remove these clamps from here because I won't be able to get any glue in there without it now this area here it doesn't matter if it oozes out okay Get a clamp on there. I'm going to make sure I haven't got a step on that top face. You can see when looking down, I want to make sure that face there is flat that way with no step in it. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue that together. As I say, it doesn't matter if I get glue using on this seam because I can get to it to sand it. But for reasons that will become clearly apparent. There we go. Right, so we can clamp this all together now and then we can do our gluing now clamping this like this now means no glue is going to ooze out of any joints and what we don't want is glue oozing out of this joint down here and affecting our finish now I've got a little bit of a sprue nib on there still so I'm just going to sand that out now I can go around here now with my extra thin quick setting. I'm going to put plenty down in there. 
So that mounting is glued on there absolutely solid. Make sure it lines up. I'm just going to take a straight edge and make sure it lines up with that flange. And it doesn't. happy with that we're gonna to have to do a lot of work on that and then I'm gonna go around this seam just brush in some extra thin like so am I gluing the wrong side here I am aren't I Yeah, I'm going the wrong side. Oops. So I'm going to brush in the extra thin, let it capillary down into that joint. And then that will just go in there then and it will set without affecting without oozing out or anything nothing's moving around yeah I've done it again I've glued the wrong side or have I no this is the right side that's a sign of a good fitting part when you can't see which side you're supposed to be gluing. And there we go. So I'll do now is hold this together where that clamp is. Don't let it move. Brush some glue in there where the clamp was. Put the clamp back on. Same here. And the same here. Okay, so they're dry now. I end up building both of them, but we'll just use we'll just use one for this um, for this example. Now, <clears throat> in fact, I will bring this one in because I want to show you something on that. Um, the glue the glue join is, is dried and everything's all nice, and we can basically sand this one here, this fairing, to get the front and back of that nice. Um, now, this area here, we've got these huge gaps. You could come in with filler and it'll all shrink back. You could come in with sprue goo and it'll all shrink back. And the trouble is it'll probably shrink back next month. Um, or you could use Mr. Surfacer. Now, what I would suggest with a gap this big, use filler first, sand it back, and then use your Mr. Surfacer over the top to finish it off. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use sprue goo because this plastic is so soft it it just absorbs all the, the the chemicals and solvents and it's just going to remain a gooey mess for quite a long time and you would probably find you come to look at your model in a few weeks time after you've done this and you would probably find a big sink mark there so and i've just noticed i've got a bit of a sprue nib left there so um yeah so it's it's worth um it's worth thinking about what you're doing and and where you are now if, if it's your fuselage halves like with these fuselage halves here if I had a great big gap here say I might want to put some sprue goo in there because I know that I'm going to be a long time before I'm going to be actually finished with this so basically what I would suggest is stay away from sprue goo in areas like this where there's big gaps because it's going to go down in there and stay in there for a very stay wet for a very long time so what we've got here are a couple of different things and I'm going to use a pencil to highlight this what we've got here is a sink mark now 
if I go over there you can see now that I've got the the pencil on there and if I rub over there with a sanding stick just gently it will remove the pencil you can see that down in that dip is a sink mark and that's where those location tabs are we've got one there we've got one here and we've got one there so what we need to do is get rid of them now the thing is think about what we're doing here with these joints now we're going to be putting Mr. Surfacer in here all right and then we're going to go around with a cotton bud with our thinners on and remove it okay and that will just leave the Mr. Surfacer down in the corner we're not going to sand it if I were to start filling this now and filling these and everything when I come in with my alcohol <clears throat> I'm going to remove or thinners I'm going to be removing the Mr. Surfacer from those areas so always do your alcohol bits first and then do your sanding bits after okay so what we're going to do here is we're just going to paint some Mr. Surfacer 1000 into this glue joint and as I say it's that good it doesn't really need it but for the purposes of this video I'm going to show you but um, I'm trying to see which side yeah the joints on this side so I'm just taking my Mr. Surfacer not using it from the side from the bottom of the jar I'm just going to brush it in to this joint in here okay it doesn't need to be particularly neat and tidy just you just don't want to waste too much of your uh, Mr. Services there's no point in plastering it everywhere you just want to get it where you need it and there we go We just brush that in pull it around you do actually put it on quite heavy you don't want to be um, you know brushing it out really thin everywhere and now you can see this is why I didn't want to have glue oozing out everywhere because it would affect this joint and there we go that's that Okay, so that can just be left to dry now. Now I can brush some in there if I want to. Okay, so that could just be left to dry. The other thing we need to do on this, this is specific to this kit. There is a mould error. It's like a about two millimetres out from that edge on the side with the flange. There's a mould seam that needs to be sanded out. So, um, so there we go. Okay, so leave that to dry now and then I'll come back with the alcohol. Right, so this has literally been on here about 10 minutes now and it's about 20 degrees in here at the moment so it's drying pretty fast. As you can see there it's still a touch wet there but that's absolutely fine. So I've got my um, jar of dirty, well, it's Mr. Surfacer in, um, in Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners and then I'm just going to literally wipe over here with a cotton bud and remove the excess and it's just going to leave a trace of the Vista Surfacer in the corner. Okay, rub it off with your finger. Probably not good to rub it off with your finger, probably, it's probably not good to get this stuff on your hands but uh, hey ho. And there we go. rubbing away and that will just leave as I say just leave a trace of the Mr. Surfacer in the corner And people have asked me how long do you leave it before you can rub it down and how long do you leave it before this and that and the other 
it's the same as when you come to thin it there is no answer to that question I mean if you're gonna be sanding it leave it as long as you can um, one of the unfortunate things with it it drives from the outside in it's like a two-pack paint so it will form a shell but underneath will still be soft so if you try and rub it down too early you'll just tear it off um, so it's best to uh, it's best to leave it as long as you can if you're sanding it if you're doing this just leave it 10 minutes 20 minutes whatever and this basically is the method you use when you don't want to be sanding now you can see we've got a dirty mark around there you can leave that it doesn't matter or you could get the fresh end of your cotton bud and just go over it and just remove the excess that's on there brush has gone over the other side there so just remove that from there and there we go as you can see that is that done and if I can get the camera to focus you'll see there's just a trace of the Mr. Surfacer left in the corner so if there was a little gap there or anything it's filled it in let's just put a little radius in there so when you paint it it looks like one and I mean to be honest this was such a good seam anyway you probably could have left it but this will leave a lovely little radius in that corner okay so there you go right so moving on to these sink marks now um, I'm gonna use the 1000 again and just to show you I don't clean the brush you can see the bristles are quite hard there but as soon as you go back into your mister surfacer just dip it in and it saves on solvents or thinners or whatever you don't need to clean your brush so just gonna go in here now and I'm just gonna dab some quite heavily put quite a heavy drop because it does shrink over that mark there and I've gone round and marked where they were so there's one there there's one here which is just next to that that panel so I'll be a little, little careful with that one there's one here and then there's one here as well okay now I know I said I was going to use filler in here my concern is we've got such a small gap squeezing the filler down into there is going to be quite difficult so what I'm going to do is just lay on some Mr. Surfacer because this is thin enough to go down into that gap and fill it up the problem is with small tiny gaps if you put filler in there what you find is when you sand it down all you're doing is sanding the top off and you end up with the uh, the gap still there so I'm just putting that in there now and I'm gonna leave this for a few hours to go off because it's gonna sink back in there and then I'll probably put some 500 over the top once I know I've got that um, that gappy seam all filled up. So I'll do the same on this tank. Oh, I can't do it yet because I haven't gone round with my uh, leveling thinners. But there you can see I've gone round now and just put a drop on. I'm going to put another drop on top of that one. You can see it sinking back. Another drop there. Okay, so I'll leave that now for a while and then we'll rub that down. Okay guys, so the Mr. Servicer has gone off on here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go over and sand out these, um, these areas where there were sink marks. So you'll see straight away that we're sanding away. And I'm using a, a fairly hard sponge, it's not a hard block but I'm not putting any pressure on at all so it won't deform if you start pushing down in what you'll do is just dig all the all the Mr. Surfacer out you, you want to be um, not pushing down at all and just let the let the sanding stick do the work and you can see there because we've got a shiny patch in the middle it's sunk back and we need to actually apply some more so we'll do the same here OK, 
okay and the other thing you can use if you've got these skinny sticks these floury skinny sticks or anybody's skinny sticks they're really good for stuff like this and they're also really good for stuff like this look getting in there you can get in there between there and sand that back now you want to be careful sanding all this too much because you're going to be putting more applications in yet so don't don't go mad with the sanding in that area and then we can come in from behind here we can sand this out again no pressure just let the sanding stick do the work don't go gouging it in and producing heat and everything and you'll see that all you get left with is the Mr. Surfacer left in the lower area. Now if you want to leave those sink marks in there and think oh yeah oh great they're going to look like dents that's entirely up to you but bear in mind probably every kit will be the same with the same sink marks so if you put your models in shows or anybody's going to look at your model who knows it, they'll say why do you take the sink marks out and you'll say I thought I'd leave them because they're like dense and everyone will say no they don't so you've been warned just gently sand over that area there and I'm going to go along the sides here because I need to get that ridge straight along the top and then same on this one just sand this away here So you can see somebody actually asked me in, in the comments I think it was this morning they said um, what's the best Mr. Servicer to dip the chips in and I actually replied well fries are really best in 500 uh, big hearty chips are probably best with 1200 I think I got that the wrong way round because the fries would sort of bend as you try to push them in so probably better start off with the 1200 with your fries um, you could certainly go for the thicker stuff with your big chips because you just push them in but um yeah I mean the thousand is really really good for model. I'd save you a thousand for modeling and perhaps eat the other two. Um, of course these day and age I have to be careful what I say so I didn't mean that. I, I, wouldn't, I didn't mean eat it. Don't dip your chips in it. It's just a, a joke. Okay. So um, there we go. And we can see now that we've got these, these sink marks are now dealt with with a drop of Mr. Surfacer in there and this one here needs a drop more obviously didn't put enough in there and you can get, get into that corner okay and then you can just go along afterwards with a soft sponge just a nice gentle soft sponge with not very coarse and just go over them and just to make sure there's no flat spots on there or anything and that's it job done and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more in there and then leave it till tomorrow, rub it down, put more in, leave it till tomorrow, rub it down and just keep doing it. And that's why sometimes it's good um, if you are building this kit, you know, get your tanks out now, build them up and um, you've got all the time in the world then to be doing this rather than leaving it right to the end and having to having to make yourself, you know, wait and not be able to finish your model off because you're waiting for this thing to dry. So, um there we go and this one's still not be, I've still not been round and I'll just I will just show you on this uh, where's my jar of dirty thinners I will just show on this this has been left now when did I do this about 11 o'clock this morning it's now half past six so this has been like seven and a half hours now you can see that it takes a lot more work to get it off than it did this morning so when you're doing this with your with your thinners it's probably best to do it sooner rather than later especially if you're I mean one of the other reasons you would do this um, which I should have explained this morning I just remembered if I was um, if I was working in a heavily detailed area like if I was working on this wing and I had a seam to deal with here okay I would do this because if I start especially if they were positive rivets if I start sanding I'm going to remove my detail so if you're working on old model or helicopter with positive rivets and you've got a seam line here if you rub this over you won't lose any detail if you look at my videos you'll see me doing it and why I do it if you start sanding where there's raised detail you're going to lose all your detail so that's another good reason for um, using the alcohol method another one it's good for is if you're sort of in an intake tube or something you can go in there get this nice and wet go in just rub it around and it will kind of blend everything around but don't go too mad because you'll, all you'll end up doing is pulling it out of the seam but you need a fairly good joint to start with doing that 
and you can see now when we put the thinner on it makes the uh, sink mark stand out I'm not going to worry about too much on this tank because I'm not going to be using it um, as I say both of my aircraft are going to be World War II um, and hopefully somebody will come out with a scheme for one of the famous carriers for the uh, US Navy version like Yorktown or or um, oh, what's the other one two carriers that were Hornet that were involved in the Midway my mind slipping there were more than two weren't they I mean Lexington as well is, is a, another famous one I believe so uh, yeah I wait for someone to come out for decals or, or masks so that I can make my US Navy one something a little bit sort of different from in the box so we'll see if nothing comes out then I'll, um, I'll just do it out of the box there we go so that has been your tutorial on Mr. Surfacer. Now, I have also done in the sidelines this one. This is the Hellcat wing that I'm doing experiments on. And you can see what I've done here. This end, this line here, this is a division. This has just had two lots of 1200 sprayed on. Sprayed on, let dry, as I did last night for you. But another one on this morning, let it dry. This side had, Mr. had uh, 1200, then I polished it back. Then I toothbrushed it underwater to make sure I get all the residue because I wet sanded it. I'd make sure I toothbrush it underwater to get all the residue out of the detail. And then I've gone over the whole lot again with another layer of 1200. So what we're going to see is the difference. Now I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up. But I don't know if you can see it. But no it's not going to get it. This has got a smoother texture. I don't know if I can... You can hear the difference. That one's making less noise with my nail than that one. And the plastic's even noisier. Okay, <laughs> no, that's not really a very good test at all. But this one is definitely smoother. So what I'm going to do now is let this dry and then tomorrow morning I'll do some polishing. But this is going to be a separate video because this is going to be quite, quite it's not going to be a long video but it's going to be lots of segments that's going to take me over sort of probably two or maybe even four days to make so I, I want to get this video out for you guys I want to get this out tonight so that's my plan to get this one out for you tonight and just show you the different ways I use Mr. Surfacer any questions pop them down below I will answer them if I get enough questions on the same thing something I've forgotten something I've missed just um you know I'll, I'll do another video or add it onto another video or something but um no thanks for watching this and i uh, hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've learned something from it and um keep your eyes open because i mean like for example i've got this hellcat fusing lights together now i'm going to be using mr servicer a lot on here um it needs quite a bit of work there was some damage on here on my kit if you remember um i'm gonna to have to use mr servicer around this area here to get the bulkhead sort of sealed in so it all looks good um, and there's some I've got a bit of mismatch there unfortunately which is my own stupid fault um, and then we've got these areas here for these formation lights so yeah I'm going to um, have a better work I'll cut out here to on here to do this so uh, yeah as I say thanks for watching keep your eyes peeled and I'll uh, I'll be back with more stuff for you very very soon bye bye for now